Hi everyone, and welcome back for this third and last video in our series on this fantastic wooden World War II era propeller blade. So in the first video we showed you how we used photogrammetry, which is taking a lot of pictures from different angles of this thing out in the open, to build a 3D model. And we really saw a nice uh, section of the air forward profile and so on. In the second video, we showed you how we actually used that model to run an aerodynamic simulation on Airshaper on just the propeller blade. And we plotted really interesting curves on the power, torque, thrust, efficiency and so on. And in this last video, we're going to show you what happens if you put that 3D model of the propeller on a real, well not a real, but a public 3D model of um, the BT-13 aircraft, which is what we think was the aircraft or is one of the aircraft onto which this propeller was mounted in the past. So based on the propeller information that we saw in the past, we saw that at least one of the aircraft onto which it was used was the BT-13 and we found this online 3D model. It's definitely not going to be perfect, it's low poly, so low resolution, but it's going to serve the purpose here. So we downloaded this model and then what we had to do was of course um, to load this model into Blender and then add the real propeller to it. So what we did was to actually load the full aircraft model and we looked at some data online to find out what the uh, scaling factor should be and after a bit of trial and error um, calculating the scale factor uh, we found out that 0.05 would do the job to get this plane um, loaded into meters and that would match well with the propeller that we would also put into meters or that we put into meters last time when we loaded this object. So you can see here the propeller is loaded and again this is not a per perfect aircraft model um, but we are, what we are going to do is just try and position it uh, kind of uh, correctly. So what we need to do is just to um, join these two elements and then we can move them so what I did previously, more precisely than what I'm showing you now, is to just rotate the propeller, um, then uh, put it in position, then rotate along the x-axis, the global x-axis, which is this one, put it to 90, and that's it. Um, that's the only thing we did, and then of course we deleted the old propeller, and then we exported this model. So the next thing that we did, um, after checking the wingspan dimensions and so on, was to upload the entire aircraft with this propeller mounted on top of it into Airshaper, and again set up the same simulation as before. So we have an RPM of 1900, and we have a forward velocity of 130 miles per hour. What we did do is increase the resolution um, because now the resolution has to be applied to the entire aircraft. So we need more CFD or mesh cells actually to capture the propeller accurately to make it uh, fair in terms of comparison. So we ran two simulations. The propeller alone before was 1 million. Now we did one with 10 million on the full aircraft and also one with around 60, 70 million cells. The reminder here, this is the uh, propeller standalone simulation that we did. So you can see that there's a bit of um, a low pressure area here. If you look at the surface pressure, um, and of course we had the high pressure at the other side. So if we look at this one then, um, here we have the aircraft with the propeller. Um, we have a similar pressure pattern on the blades here. Um, we also have a similar uh, pressure here around um, the front of the blade, so this low pressure area. And what's really interesting to see, even though this is a very low resolution simulation of the propeller, of the, of the plane, let's say not the propeller, um, you can see that there's a bit of uh, energy being lost as the air is being pushed and has to curve around um, this front cover um, around the engine. You can see that there's flow separation around air intakes and exhausts. Um, the landing gear, let me switch to the more accurate simulation. So this is the highest accuracy. Very similar pattern. Um, we saw little difference in terms of torque, um, but just to get more uh, accuracy in there. So you see that every small element here on, on the let's call it the greenhouse, like on cars, is causing flow separation. Um, these elements which stand out on the plane cause flow separation. Um, some of these are the result of the low resolution of the aircraft model. So you can see the low resolution, our mesh is actually more precise than the resolution of this 3D model. So you can see some flow separation, but nothing dramatic. Uh, but of course the landing gear is creating a lot of drag uh, on this aircraft. Um, if you look at the surface pressure pattern, uh, you can see that even though it's a, it's a dummy model, we still get this low pressure area at the, at the top of the wing generating lift. Um, so let's go back to the propeller. So we ran the simulation and if I go back to my Excel sheet, so these are the two extra simulations. 
On the full aircraft, uh, with the propeller included, so that means we went from a basic simulation, which is 1 million cells, to one with 10, and one with 50 to 100 million cells. And we saw that the the values didn't change much between these simulations, uh, so you could call this a mesh sensitivity analysis, uh, indicating that there's not much difference if you increase the mesh resolution beyond what we already had, which means um, it's a good sign for the reliability of the output. Um, what we did see is that if you compare the torque and thrust values of the propeller, um, in free flow compared to when it's mounted on the plane, we see that these orange dots here, uh, which is when it's mounted on the plane, um, actually we have more torque that we need to sustain this RPM, which also means we need more power because they're linked directly via the RPM. But there's also more thrust coming out of this propeller. Now, why is this? Well, if you go back to the simulation, the downwash of the propeller is actually hitting the aircraft itself which means that you have a pressure buildup in the wake of the propeller and this reflects back onto the rear side or the back side or the pressure side of the propeller. So you create an artificial increase in thrust on your propeller and you would think that's good, but it's not necessarily good because um, that increased forward thrust on your propeller, which is the back pressure of the pressure buildup on your plane, actually also acts on your plane and causes more uh, downwind drag on your plane. So it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, but it is interesting to see because very often we, we, we see uh, people optimizing propellers and then when the propeller is mounted onto a drone or an aircraft or an eVTOL, uh, suddenly the performance is not as expected. So it's really important uh, to analyze the propeller also on the real structure or the real airframe onto which it will be mounted uh, in real life. Which also goes to show that it's important to streamline the geometry or support structure. If you have an eVTOL and you have like a support boom which holds the propeller, uh, making that support boom uh, aerodynamic is also important. Otherwise, you're just increasing the thrust on your propeller virtually, uh, but you're also increasing the drag on your support structure. And the net effect is usually just negative, uh, so less overall forward thrust on your aircraft. Um, so that's it for this last video. So really interesting to see um, if we go back to the conclusion here. Um, so that was it for the last part of this series on how we analyzed a propeller all the way from modeling it in 3D to running a standalone propeller simulation to mounting it on an aircraft to see actually what is happening on the full aircraft. I hope you liked the series. If you did, hit the like button. Um, please be sure to check out this sample project online. You can just go ahead and, and rotate this yourself and analyze both the individual propeller and full aircraft simulation just to understand the flow a bit more. If you have any suggestions for other things that we should try and scan and model, drop it in the comments and thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.